Okay, here we're going to investigate controlled indoor environments for cannabis production. So these indoor environments, I have some pictures here, some like sterilized lab conditions. While it may not necessarily be this extreme, uh, in some cases this is advantageous to reduce the chance for disease. See the advantage of being in an indoor environment, you can control a lot of uh, factors. You can also pack plants in, but with this, if these conditions are unclean, uh, disease can spread very rapidly through that area. So a controlled uh, indoor environment generally has no natural sunlight. Uh, it's kind of a sealed kind of growth chamber. It can be computer controlled and monitored, especially for larger operations. It needs to have good air circulation. So when you think about this room, we don't want to think about it completely sealed up. Uh, there needs to be a good air circulation uh, that does occur. Also, typically when we're adding air circulation, humidity can become a factor. Uh, it should be monitored not getting too low or too high, depending on what environment you're in. Typically, they're good candidates for adding supplemental carbon dioxide uh, because they're sealed. Because there are so many controls, this is why adding this extra steps is sometimes deemed to be worth it. And documentation and cleanliness is very important. So indoor grooms basics. The groom can basically cost as much as you want to spend. I have the example here, you know, it can go very cheap or it can go really expensive. However, quality plant material, the lights that you choose to grow, if there's, especially if there's no access to outdoor sun, and the growing media should be the top priority. So what should you spend your money on? Well, these are kind of the three main things, the good quality plants to have good supplemental lights for them, and a good media. This is where you should be spending your money first and then adding in some other things from that. In general, a grow home should have that cleanliness, again, as a priority, and that's consistent uh, cleanliness throughout the entire grow. Um, good air circulation, both for inside and outside ventilation, reflective walls so you're maximizing your lights. Uh, that hopefully are of high quality, temperature control so things aren't getting out of whack, and a carbon filter to eliminate odors, uh, especially if neighbors are a concern. On a small scale, a continuous harvest should be a priority, so having one room uh, that changes lights and conditions with a planting will limit your total harvest once every four months or so. So the goal is to always have rooms in different stages, so you're kind of getting into this continual harvest of uh, plant material. You're not going into like boom and bust, you're getting all flowers and then all veg and then all clones and repeating that cycle. Always having some in different stages. In this small scale, uh, multiple rooms or tents allow you to have one dedicated to cloning and propagation, one vegetative growth, and one flowering. The same concept is used for larger grow facilities as they use large rooms dedicated for each of the three distinctive properties. So think of it like in your house, you want to have you know, a baby's room, that's kind of your cloning and your propagation room. Uh, vegetative room, that's kind of where you're looking at growing and expanding. And then flowering, which is considered like the money room where the, you know, all the work is really done as that plant goes into flower and um, produces those very useful cannabinoids. Lights determine the grow space, so a 3 foot by 3 foot area can effectively be lit by a 400 watt um, high intensity discharge light, typically abbreviated HID, and a 5 by 5 area requires though a 1000 watt HID light. So the type of light or size that you're using, this is like a Vita Pro 1000 DE, it's a double ended bulb, this could light uh, a 5 by 5 area very effectively. But there's other lighting options, uh, this is just an example, regardless of the number of lights can dictate the total square foot of growing space. So just because you have an area to grow in, if you can't effectively light it, you start to push this thousand watt to do a seven by seven foot area, well it's just not going to be as effective. Five by five is the kind of the recommended, maybe pushing it to six by six, but much more than that is not recommended. Estimated yield, well total ex uh, expected grams per watt after about two months of flowering. Minimal target is about 0.5 to 1 gram per watt. Example, if you're running a 600 watt uh, light bulb, it should produce about 300 to 600 grams of dried buds. This just gives you kind of an idea of what that area should be using and if you're using it effectively. Air circulation, as I mentioned, is very important. Having fans to move air within the grow space. Keep in mind exchanging air from the outside environment is also necessary. Adding a carbon fi filter, as we see here, to reduce odors is highly recommended. So here air is being drawn through the carbon filter, taking out the odors going through the ducting, cooling this uh, light that's producing a lot of heat, and then going and venting out. This is a small grow tent operation, but this same concept can be scaled up. The ceiling height is a definite uh, consideration. You want a minimum of about five feet height. It is considered the space needed uh, for the container of plant that's growing in the space for the light to ventilate. You don't want to cram it too short, uh, especially with the high discharge lights. Minimum is usually about five feet. 
eight or nine foot ceilings are ideal wherever possible to give you just more air, uh, more availability for cooling. Walls of mirrors are not a good idea. So this is kind of a misconception, especially in small rooms. People want to reflect the light, so they think, ah, I should just put a mirror. Well, these mirrors uh, kind of create hot spots. Uh, they're not the best choice since they create hot spots and do not scatter the light. Walls should be white or have some type of mylar. This is an example of that mylar. What this reflective material does is will increase the light's use efficiency and eliminate the amount of wasted light that is you're basically paying for. And this can help disperse that evenly through the canopy, make sure most of the plant is getting a light, even some of the lower leaves. And again, if you hang mirrors, the problem is you get that one kind of bright, kind of hot spot there. Uh, and that can kind of increase the chance of burning or damaging a portion of the plant. Mylar is a great material. Tools of the trade. So it's also important to have good, um, just general tools, pruning tools, of course, for the plants, but also just general tools. Looking at um, the setting up of the process or maintenance of your room or small operation, even large operations. Having that toolbox to properly find, fix, and make adjustments is needed. Uh, just kind of an odd set of tools, but having it also well organized and know where it is so you can easily find it. Test and monitor before installing the plants. So run all systems if there's any plants. Uh, ensure everything is fully operational for at least two days. This is important too to monitor heat. I have a mid-max uh, thermometer here just to try to monitor heat because sometimes you turn the lights on and you think, oh, it all works, I'm going to save power. And then you go to put the plants in and you overheat the area. Uh, adding some water to make sure all electric systems are safely installed. No circuits are also overloaded. And to make sure if a heater's coming on or a cooling system's coming on, you're not overloading a circuit. Uh, also, light leaks, if you're in small operations, you're not getting that messing up a photo period. As I mentioned, temperature regulation is another important thing to watch. You don't shock or kill your prize crop. Lastly, uh, location, location, location. For both small and large rooms, location is everything. Small rooms need to consider proximity to electrical outlets, uh, also for air exchange. Large operations need to consider the flower room size and dynamics, as well as the ability to have both a propagation and a drying room to allow for that continual harvest. Uh, so here we have uh, outdoor locations. As the last part, they need to consider the environmental factors that may occur. Uh, so all of these, no matter what site you're growing in, you should be very familiar with your general location so that you're able to maximize it but not overload it and end up throwing plants out that you didn't plan for.